Hey guys, it's Carnifex, another Nerd This video. Hang in there with me today. This is not gonna be that barely hit 10 minutes, so something cool with YouTube happens. I don't know, YouTubers do it all the time. Anyway, this is gonna be a real nitty gritty video. I'm gonna take you all the way um, with this guide. It's for people who are relatively newer to the game or people who uh, maybe they're already in their progression a bit. They've been playing for a few months as free to play uh, or maybe they've even been playing for a while and they feel like they kind of went wrong at some point and they want to most efficient as efficiently as possible catch up and that's what this guide is about. Here are the priorities for this guide. And before I want to get before I get started, I want to give a big thanks to Meta though and Nith for those of you guys who are on the Discord. Definitely join the Discord if this is something you enjoy. If you enjoy watching YouTube videos, you probably enjoyed getting info on the Discord. Um, they were so helpful. Both both of them are responsible for the BADC that info site. Meta though created back in the day, and it's taken over it now. Um, but they helped provide both through that site. Um, and a bunch of info just personally hey I'm checking in with them and because they got access to all the data and stuff they could feed me some of the specific questions I had um, and it's been super helpful in the creation of this video so I want to give out that thanks here is the goal of this guide you are going to develop teams that will unlock all seven of the original legendary characters I don't know how many months in the future you might be watching this there might be more released since then we're talking about the OG7 for the original seven factions slash races um, you're going to build towards current and future arena metas. So the big arena meta I'm going to be building to in this utilizes buff. Is buff released? No. But we're not just going to say, oh, well, like kind of hodgepodge the other demons until you get buff. No, because there's going to be better things you can run as you work towards getting that. So there's going to be an arena team progression. Uh, efficiently build additional characters. Um, so using characters that we're already using for our legendaries as much as we can to unlock and um, clear the more advanced tiers of the challenges and events that are recurring um, and, and getting them on three stars auto uh, having quality teams for battlegrounds so we do care about that at some point again this is not the whale guide to buy a bunch of crap you're gonna not have everything right so there are gonna be there's basically there's two kind of like sub kind of losses that we take but it, to me they're the most efficient losses to take as you're going through and building things as a non day one player and as a you know non whale um and then so the raid matters um it's not neglected in this but it is not as prioritized as battlegrounds and um arena and just unlocking those character those legendary characters because obviously unlocking legendary characters very frequently contributes to your arena and the uh, and um battleground success so uh, we'll get into the nitty-gritty of that more often than not but basically if you want to fast track the raid the most effective person to help you to do that is master duo he's not as prioritized as someone who was really trying to push themselves through the raid um if you want to get to your seven get it done asap that's someone to prioritize also major shot is someone to take a look at yogi's going to be a bit out of reach but he's kind of in that that third person in that if you really care about raid look more that way um but if not you're going to stick with this guide as is so more info we are basing this off of a 960 energy per day usage you're gonna get 240 of that from time that's just hey guess what you get an energy every 10 minutes or every six minutes sorry so 10 an hour you get 360 from those refreshes that we get um, throughout the day so you know it depends on your time zone but relative to your arena payout right um, on your arena payout uh, six hours before and uh, I think it's like three hours after if I'm not making it up off the top of my head um, and then also this is banking on you using all three 50 dracoin energy refreshes daily this is achievable for completely free to play players now um, you you do that through clearing tower regularly like you do that through activity right you don't just get given everything for free uh, otherwise this wouldn't uh, this game wouldn't still be alive so you ha you're gonna have to put in the work together for free and Honestly, I am a big fan of their monthly sub package. It's only five bucks, and um, not only does it give you like a couple hundred drac coins every day, and then even kind of a little more than that whenever you consider like the pack purchase bonus, um, but it also lets the developers know how many people are really committed into the game to the extent they're willing to pay, and it's really not that much. Uh, we pay a lot more than that for a lot of things. So, again, you just Part of the purpose of this guide is to have a free-to-play guide. I'm not knocking if you don't. I'm just saying I'm a big fan of it. I think it's very reasonable and it's really beneficial. But you are still going to be able to do this even without that. 
Uh, and then as a small reminder, you get 720 energy from leveling one of the Comet events for Little Batty. It's the one that you get for whenever you uh, increase player level. It costs about 2 million gold to do all the leveling you need to reach max rewards, but you get an additional 720 energy. And that energy is not something that you have to use even within those three days. For those of you who haven't noticed, the event after it's finished stays in your queue for the next three days until the, the second subsequent Comet event starts. So you can actually go in there one day, two day, almost three days after that uh, leveling event has finished and you can still go back and grab energy there to help divide it more evenly to help yourself make up things. Now we are going to be using almost all of this energy for uh, shard farming initially. So whenever you're leveling early on and you have all this extra stuff, that's when you need to be working on gear for all of your characters. Um, and there you go. Um, so following you, following this guide, will result in you getting in excess of a thousand, 100,000 uh, experience points. 100,000 experience points put you at level 66. That means you can max all abilities um, because uh, leaderships can be maxed at level 60. Uh, level 66 means that you can go to gear 9, a little above, and just as an FYI, 70 is what brings you to gear 10. If you have everybody at gear 9, we're basically this is kind of like a fast track Soleus in two months. Um, even if even if he doesn't come around, you're going to be ready in that amount of time. And there, I've put in some notes to where if you kind of know when he's being released, if you have an idea to where you can kind of slow down in other areas and move on to other characters. Um, because the big thing, you usually can't rush without money at all. Even if you got a ton of Dracoins, you can buy a ton of gear with if you have a bunch of Dracoins stacked up. It's hard to get specific shards for characters, and that's why that's the focus here. Um, I'm going to go into Orcs in a little more detail, um, but there is this this as the order here. This is the order that I recommend you work on teams to unlock legendaries, to build towards the metas most efficiently, and to get the the most well put together teams as you can at a time um, there will be two races that are one race that's kind of a major casualty of this progression and uh, another that's like a minor casualty but really the other five you're going to be working on pretty solidly over the course of this and it's not because those races aren't great it's just that there's not as much synergy with doing everything efficiently i'm going to make some minor adjustments to just kind of the aesthetics of this guide as we go but here we go so first, you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and boost this puppy a little bit. What happens if we go to hundo? Okay, scoot this over here. Do the rule. Nope, there's no rule on it. Okay. So I'm trying to make it a little bigger because I know it's been a little bit of a difficulty sometimes. So we're going to go into orcs first. I'm going to bump this up even a little more. Let's call it 250. Right. Pull this up here. Okay, thank you for bearing with me. So we are into the Orcs faction. Now, this one's a little more complicated because we get a bunch of stuff for free that is atypical for most of the game with the Orcs. They really try and put you in this direction, and it's not a bad faction. Not only does this faction help you unlock Soleus, who's one of the most valuable legendaries in the game at this moment, and really for the future overall, he's he revolutionizes the human faction. You cannot run a Darien lead and plan on doing anything unless you have are really overpowered for the content you're trying to do. So going over first, we got Corcrum. Corcrum, you're going to get five free shards from every time that you finish all the dailies. Easy. Now, we're going to get certain things at about that rate, um, but that's for free, for nothing. It's one of the reasons I like Little Batty, and we'll get into her in a little bit later. Um, also, he has one mission that's on one of the green scroll um, missions. You're going to have a green scroll crunch at the beginning, and you're going to have a blue scroll crunch at the end. At the beginning, I totally support going after those green scroll nodes where they have valuable character shards on them. And we're going to go into that as we keep on going. So Corporum, I recommend just letting those dailies go and then farming them on his green scrolls. No, the D16 stands for Demons16. So that's the always farm. That means if it's a higher priority one, you are doing it period bar none. And I will get, and I have a shop farm um, like uh, list that you'll follow from top to bottom and that's how you'll get stuff done. 
Um, so we have the uh, so the tower, if you need to rush him at the end, but you want to prioritize Mortha, because since Corcoran's in all those daily uh, shards, it's easier to farm Mortha from the tower in order to get them to sync up more, um, uh, to be done in closer to the same time than if you had gone with him first, and now you're wasting all of these shards. You're not wasting them going to the starship. We're going to talk about how it's going to take a long time for free-to-play newer players to get in there. So we have the always farm, right? The maybe farm. This is kind of like a um, maybe eventually when you unlock it, if you have extra energy for nodes or if it's necessary to catch you up, definitely it's worth doing. Rarely is like there's got to be something weird going on, but it's not the worst decision you can make. The always farm rate, this is how many shards per day and then days to seven. That's if you exclusively had this always rate, right? How many days would it take you to hit seven star in that character? Maybe rate. If there's no maybe there, it's going to be zero. If not, it's going to be other things. There's a 40% drop rate for shards from hard modes. So easy here, right? If you see that, that's two and two. If you do five, right? If you do five, you should get two shards per day on that rate. And then um, you've got two of them, so that's four, right? And then if you combine it here, that's why it takes it takes Mar from 44 days to seven star to 29 because you're not only farming them from the arena one and a half times a day. Um, I'll get into all that in a bit but um so you're gonna get some special shards from a bunch of these people though so rantha you're gonna get two per time um per time that you summon an order character starting at your fifth order character summon um uh, on missions you're gonna get 14 free shards from her in the order campaign through chapter three mission six you're also gonna get two per hard mode in chapters order five through order eight so every hard mode that's four per chapter you're gonna get free two free shards you're also gonna get two per hard mode in demons so you get a lot of free shards from rantha and that's part of the reason why she's a maybe farm we actually have someone else who's a higher priority from the guild shop in my opinion and i'll get into that when we get her um mortha part of the reason that i'm gonna kind of suggest that you don't go haul all balls to the walls on her in towers because you get 26 free shards a free unlock she's a 25 shard unlock from uh, by the time that you clear clans chapter two so you get that healer for free after you've kind of struggled by those first couple chapters with your few clans characters that you get um, to start off with Corcoran already talked about the dailies. Mar you're going to get shards for clearing missions um, for order uh, chapter three and then mission nine and 12 you're going to get one so that's you know two and then you're going to get two each from the or, uh, next chapter's hard mode so order four you're going to get eight so you're going to get 10 total from there you're going to get a free unlock of mar through if you get through order chapter four uh, you don't have to three-star it. That's just getting it. Now, Tromgar is a bit of a thing. So with this guide, it's possible that you may not be getting seven-star slowly the first time around. I didn't, and I put and I put some solid money in for that first month. Um, you may not get him seven-star the first time he comes around. If he comes after three months, you probably will. But if he comes in in about that two-month window, you will at least have a six-star Tromgar, though, because and here's how this all breaks down. <laughs> And I'll go ahead and flash my little script over here just so you can see it briefly, right? Okay, so you'll see at the bottom of the screen there. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to get 15 shards from 100 arena wins. So in two months, again, that's like nothing. You can, If you can get five a day, you can get way more than that. It's actually possible to get more shards, but I'm being conservative, saying you don't need it every day. It's pretty easy to coast through those arena wins at the beginning, though. Next, you're going to get 18 shards for 12 shop purchases per day over that 60-day period. Okay, so that's a total of 720 shop purchases, and you'll get 18 shards incrementally over the course of time. You don't get 18 for 720, you get, you know, three along the way. You get 12 for upgrading your characters, 500 total levels. So if you take, you know, 10 characters to level 51, there you go. Um, you can get that a lot sooner than some of these other ones, but the, the, the difference between the next tier jumps quite a bit. So I've put in some reasonable expectations for, again, a new free to play ish character, um, 30 shards for spending 10 million gold, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You'll do that a month. Um, uh, 15 shards for arena. So this is for shops, 15 shards for arena shop spending. 
18 for tower. The reason for that is you're going to get more tower currency than arena currency. You farm it faster, and they have the same same mile markers at which they give you Tromgar, um, at which that they give you Tromgar shards. Uh, 12 shards from a guild spending, guild shop spending, same reason. You get less, um, at least right off the bat, from your guild. Um, and then uh, next, 61 from, this is uh, profile levels. So again, you're going to get from, and it starts at, um, that starts at level, at account level five, because that's when you unlock achievements. So that's why, you know, I said 66, you're guaranteed with a hundred K energy slash experience or higher. Sorry. It's just experience because that hundred K is factoring in all the experience you're going to get from doing the dailies. So not only is it doing that 960 energy every day, but it's also the experience you're going to get from doing all the dailies. They are really not that bad. And I've also factored in some cushion considering you're going to be getting a bunch of free level up experience along uh, energy and energy and experience along the way. Uh, 60 from logging in. If you can get to profile level five on the first day, which you should, <laughs> then you will get one for every day that you log in. You add that all together. That's 241 shards in two months for free, absolutely for free for Tromgar. Tromgar is someone that some of the elite meta teams from a day one shard are using right now. So, uh, very, very helpful. He does have two hard modes, but they are a bit late into the campaign, so they can be a bit harder to unlock. So there you go. There's your little cheat sheet for Tromgar. It is quite a thing. Maybe I'll screenshot that or whatever. Um, but that's how you're going to get a lot of these shards, and it's going to help accelerate you into our second team we're going to farm. But just not going to mount uh, Mortha, right? You're going to exclusively get her from Tower. Pretty much if you get them in Tower, you're going to exclusively farm them through tower. You get so many, sh uh, so much currency from shards, uh, for shards in tower. I've gone over the achievements for Rantha, and I've gone over the achievements for Tromgar. They're more significant. Again, you got some for these two as well, but not nearly as significant as these guys. A couple hundred, thank you. Um, you can farm from the guild shop if you need to finish her up pretty quick, but you're going to focus on someone else first, and we'll get into that. Alrighty, so next we're going to go down to the elves. So the elves are going to be the second team we go after, and they're actually kind of the main faction that we largely ignore. So why are we doing that? That doesn't make sense, right? Well, the reason for that is because the ember event is easy as crud, and you can pretty much just stack up your nighty L, and she can carry you through it. You'll need to put some... Uh, some ability scrolls into certain characters like sharp in order to get his um his a3 his buff to level five so we can use it on the first turn and you'll want to get you know these other characters to to gear nine ish maybe gear eight even a couple i had kelrian at gear eight when i did it um he might even be gear seven i don't know he was a punching bag um but nightingale can essentially carry this um there's a little key at the bottom in fact i'll go over that real briefly here um so as you see little things here, um, um, what I want you to know is if this little gold thing is over it, that is an exclusive place or places if they're both, if like for example, if it's only farmable on two hard nodes and they're both in the same segment of like always farm, then it'll be gold there. This character is exclusively farmable at the locations listed. That is excluding chess, tournaments, etc. But since those are not reliable or necessarily even going to be uh, and particularly for like the, the chest may not even be gotten at all um, for a free to pay player, not reliable. So we're not going after that. L just designates that's going to be the leader that I recommend using for the unlock event. A little minus next to it means that that character is easier to farm, less overall utility though, and the event will be harder. So if it's possible for you to get the one with the, one of the ones with the pluses, instead it is harder to farm. You may not be able to get it in time, which is maybe why you would want to have the minus ready. Um, but you're going to get more overall utility from that character because they're better and the event will be easier for you. You'll need less gear, you'll need less ability scrolls than if you had had the minus character. The asterisk, there's gonna, we haven't had two of the, <laughs> we haven't had two of the legendaries out yet. We don't know what the event looks like and for that reason there's a couple characters like, yeah, you know what, I can't say this character wouldn't be better than another potentially depending on how it laid out and I'll go into that later. And a little up arrow indicates to prioritize gear and abilities on that character for this event. So we're going to go back up here. And uh, so with elves, right, you can see, and you can see with Tromgar, right, I put 
gear abilities on Tromgar because Tromgar is someone you're actually going to use long term. He has more longevity in his utility. Same with Nidiel. The rest of these people, you pro you definitely do not need to get them above gear 9, and you may not need to get them above gear 8, depending on how much RNG you're willing to put up with. Um, and depending on how strong your Nidiel is, if they give us gear 12 by the time you get there, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but my Nidia was gear 11 and was basically able to solo it with buff and like punching bag support from the other guys. Um, again, going through, you can see there's some arenas, but a lot of these characters are from nodes. And that's why we go with them second, even though this event is literally easier than the Soleus event. We're not going for it first because we care more about getting Soleus. We get more free shards towards Soleus. Um, and we're not really going to go crazy into elves, but Ember will help us unlock someone else important later. And that's Renara. Now next, I know that we just had this event. It's the fifth legendary we've gotten, but I'm recommending that you build towards clearing this one third. And the reason for that is because you unlock more Doom, who is crucial to a lot of kind of those current meta, not like future meta, but like current meta teams. And he is still a bomb character on the future meta team under buff. So um, we, we want to get him ASAP, and he works fine in a Soleus team, because on this team, this is assuming you already got Soleus. It's going to be pretty hard. You're going to need pretty much max characters to do it with Darien. It is possible, but it is not worth putting all that into Darien, especially as a free-to-play character. So you're going to want to get Soleus uh, beforehand, and you're going to want to have slow-farmed uh, Freezard. Freezard is someone you can actually unlock for free in a couple weeks under using this guide. Um, through the personal event that you get, through spending drag coins, energy, daily login, etc., you're going to get enough to actually use him relatively early on uh, after, you know, two, three weeks. Um, and then you can start using him and eventually you'll get to where you unlock his nodes and you'll really be able to start farming him. Um, so those would be the two characters I would prioritize most. If you can get Cruella in time, great. You probably won't be able to, though, with this guy because she is a single hard mode farm. Cruella is one of the two characters that I recommend once you have the energy available to do so to do a daily refresh on her node in order to get her more quickly because she's great for arena. You don't need her at seven stars uh, and, and battlegrounds, but you don't need her at seven stars to use her there. And that's why it's like kind of a if you can do it because she can invis people and she can reflect people without it. She won't have as much survivability, but you'll have all the speed, right? And, you know, stars don't affect speed very much at all um at all um so anywho that's that other than that little baddie you're going to get her from common events uh you can get at max 10 shards every three days but even under this guide under the expectations i'm giving you at a minimum you will get her in under four months which is about the time that you're going to be able to have some of these other characters ready to go at seven stars anywho and the odds that that'll line up perfectly with a more doom event is uh, unlikely where you've already been able to get Solius. So we're going to work on that crew next. Eric is another great staple for this and he's a gladiator which means he's super helpful for a couple of the major events that we're going to care about later. All right rolling down. Okay so next we have the demons. Now the reason we're going here is we basically have a demons team ready based on how I'm advising that you farm. Um, uh, I'm, Kyra is the first person I recommend that you go after in the guild shop and Venomate I recommend that you farm at least initially to unlock and then kind of prioritize him actually as long as you know you're going to get Mortha in time and as long as Mortha is providing enough healing for you to keep going in your clans campaigns if you find yourself hurting on damage work on your Venomate because Venomate is going to be a part of that cl an early game uh, clans team for like the the hard for the missions um and then um uh, is going to be obviously be the healer so wherever you find the struggle go with there um but we're basically have a demons team ready to go because um that's what we've been building towards we've been building towards a slinger meta team um but first we're going to have that soleus meta and then we're going to work on getting to that slinger meta that we have pretty pretty dominant right now because it will also help us bleed into that buff one later without much loss of resources that we've invested into characters along the way um the characters to really uh put extra umph into um you don't need to tank you do not need mega wheel i coasted through this with a couple gear 11 characters um with these three at gear 11 gear 9 on these two easy peasy lemon squeezy so kyra you can go in 
all in on. She's a bounty hunter. You're going to need her for some stuff. Bounty hunters and gladiators we love. Uh, for Slinger, he's going to be the leader you're going to be using in Arena for until you get buff. And it is going to take you a little bit for you to get buff because it's going to be uh, rather difficult to farm in max faction overall. Um, part of the things that went into this progression were th everything from how easy is it to farm, how good is the legendary we get, does this legendary help us get another legendary we need to where we're really trying to go, all those things played in there. Um, but anyway, and also because General Murdoch is a game-changing leader for the Goblins faction. So, uh, and again, Kyra and Ven Venomate are already crucial bounty hunter characters, Slinger's going to be used in our arena faction. Next, we got the pandas. The pandas give us Renara, and Renara is someone that's going to be used without a doubt in the pride comp for whoever they're going to unlock. I have a prediction. It's based on circumstantial evidence. I, I even put a message out to Des. I'm like, hey, by the way, I am putting it out that like this is the character I recommend that people use. Or that I, I think is this is the fact I think we're going to use to unlock these last legendary characters. You hadn't told us anything yet. So it's out here. I'm not, I'm not spilling any beans. There's no wink winks here. I think there's just circumstantial evidence that really plays to it. So next we got pandas for Renara. So presumably whoever pride is used to unlock probably buff, who is our goal, they're going to need a healer to survive. And Renara is one of the best in the game for longer conflicts period, whether it's tower, whatever, this event should also be easier than the last two. And you have had plenty of time to farm pandas up. Um, I definitely recommend going the dual tank here, and that's partially because of how we're going to use this team whenever we get to battlegrounds, uh, but you do want to actually go double tank here. If you can get Patriarch Chi, great, but Master Duo is not a bad choice, not only because he's farmable from Arena, which is a lot easier than hard modes, and you're going to be hurting for energy once you start unlocking these hard modes, I tell you. Um, it's a, we'll get to the energy breakdown in a sec for all of kind of like the mandatory always farms, right? And you put twice as much into the 20 energy farms. And both of Patriarch T's are 20 energy farms. Because they have 12, 16, and 20s. It's a lot. <laughs> um, and also because Master Duo, as I, I brought up earlier, is great for the raid. He applies speed down, turn meter reduction whenever there's speed down. That's hugely helpful for getting some serious damage on the raid bosses. So if you can, great. That's but he's Chi is better for the specific event, but Master Du is not a bad choice and is totally fi viable in this spot. Uh, you will want to use the Kinley lead, even if you do have Patriarch Chi. It's better for this event. Uh, Pride. Now again, this is what we've been working for because I'm predicting that this is going to be what we use to unlock Buff. So. Here's the logic, right? Um, Buff will probably be, be the last legendary because he's the best legendary. Uh, you know, it's kind of one of the reasons why I thought they should have released Solius a little later is because Solius is going to dominate the metal, right? For until you bring in someone that can take him out. The same is going to be true with Buff. Buff is just the danger zone. Uh, you can do crazy stuff with Buff because of his turn meter swap and all that. Um, and so it makes sense that he would be the last one also, as of, you know, April 28th, right? We just got, uh, you know, Count Delman actually in the game. He's going to be the battle pass character for the next month. So it's kind of indicating, oh, it looks like there might be something going on here. Um, we, we have the General Murdoch event in a couple weeks. So we've always, whenever a legendary for a faction that has been used to unlock another legendary has been required... There's always been a second chance to get that legendary. So, for example, with the the humans unlocking Solius, we had more than one chance to get Solius for the event that humans were used to unlock a legendary for. And that's been true with every single event. Whenever we have Renara, right, we had um, Ember come back literally right before Renara came around. So we've always had that, and General Murdoch's the one that we are guaranteed to have before, and he would that would mean that goblins would be used for elves. So that's that's the logic behind it. I won't spend any more time going into it. Um, and the elves are really without a leader, and like they need one for battlegrounds. They can't just be this, you know, kind of leftover pish posh team that they currently are. So no idea what this event will look like, right? This hypothetical pride unlocking buff event. Um, Yogi's not a terrible choice, 
but he does lack the battlegrounds usefulness and arena usefulness that we are talking about. Again, he's very useful for raid applications, um, but that's not the, the heavy emphasis of this. And the reason for that is if you build towards battlegrounds, you will have enough good characters that can, with an active guild, clear the raid eventually. Um, it won't get you to it too far ahead of time, but you will get it done along the way. And if you just prioritize raid, you're going to be left a lot worse off for getting these legendaries and getting battlegrounds performance that you want. Um, so you should get either Bori or Wonderlula from the tournament shop. TBD, it's going to depend on the impact of Thalon. It's going to depend on what this event looks like. Bori does have better synergy with Revel, who again is a gladiator, so someone we want to prioritize giving our gear and ability scrolls to early on. Someone we want to prioritize farming early on. Um, so he has better synergy with him because he provides extra bleed that can go into his AoE on the second round. Um, and so, and Hera's got the better lead here, and she's got a lead that's going to be much better for the pride team application in battlegrounds so we definitely want to go with Hera but the people you want to focus on gearing and the, the specific abilities that you want to boost Renar you can pretty much go all in on Revel you can go all in on except for his leadership Salvador you don't need to go all in on I would the main thing I would is just his second special so his A3 that gives him that incredible damage meter if you can max that out that means on his, sec his first turn he's already going to have the taunt from the Hera lead so we get because she gives the auto taunt to um, to defenders um, and then Salvador's going to immediately on that second turn and that second wave whenever so many specials come offline the AI is just going to be pounding worthlessly into it and it's going to be awesome um, so I think that that team is pretty solid. You can get Kagan. He's an arena shop character. By then, you're definitely going to be able to unlock him exclusively from arena shop. Um, but I have given another node here just as an in case. Um, so if there is incredible value to um, getting Bori over uh, Wonder Lula for this event, maybe you do that. But Wonder Lula is going to be crucial for the eventual Fallon lead team. So you may want to go that direction, particularly for free-to-play, who's going to prioritize hard work first in the shard shop. So um, going on to our last faction. So again, I said we kind of we kind of take an L on a couple factions. And the, those two factions are goblins and elves. And the reason for that is without Fallon, the elves really don't have much off to much to offer. Nightiel, their only leader is easily best served on the Soleus team. So not only do they have no leader, but they just kind of lack the oomph that they really need to get going. They don't have too many uh, mechanics going their way. Count Delman's going to help with that. Um, but it, it's kind of like we, and they don't have a ton of characters that you would use. There's pretty much like, there's like a bounty hunter. It's like the only thing in that composition that helps us get some of those more crucial events. Whereas some of the other factions um, they have characters to help us build toward that more effectively to get those events done efficiently. Uh, and Goblins is kind of the other one we take the L on. Um, it's certainly not because they are bad overall as a faction. In fact, I find them really useful. But the fact that Elves are not great and the fact that Goblins are harder to get online because Instructor Gorum is one of the hardest ones to farm. He is probably going to keep showing up in some tournaments for a while, which will definitely help boost these. Because, again, this doesn't take any of like the tournament shards that you're going to get as a result of um, uh, placing well on those. Um, but Instructor Gorm is available on a single hard mode. It's him, Yogi, and Cruel are the three notables that are just like, oh, so rough. And so it takes a long time to get to the point where you can get him online. And he is going to be, I assume, pretty essential to running the, um, the Goblins faction during this event. Uh, as you can see, I highlight Adam, uh, General Murdoch, and Instructor Gorm. That's the core. What, again, whatever this event looks like, you're going to want that car, core. No question about it. It may not be impossible without it, but you're going to need that core. Um, the best fifth and fourth even, I feel like there's got to be a healer. There's got to be a healer, right? Um, it's might be thin SM. Maybe they're going to release someone else like Count Delman. I don't know. They'd, they'd have to release it in a way to where we could get him to seven stars in time. Um, so I don't know what they're going to do there. Um, <laughs> I don't know how they're going to potentially release the or again, like another new edition they've got coming up. We will see no spoilers on that. Cause I ain't got any. 
Um, but I feel like you'll need a healer. So who's the best fifth to go along? If you got Vanessa, it's probably Amara because they have such great synergy. But, for example, if this is a two-wave event, as much as I've hated on Major Shot in a while, if it's a two-wave event, you can stack him to where he's already in battle mode and he has his A2 up, so that first attack is going to have a, a chance to stun all these guys. And you can have his A3 up off cooldown because the crazy cooldowns is the reason why he's held back a lot. He takes a couple, it takes like three turns for him to come online at a minimum. And even then, it, he doesn't come online online necessarily. Um, but in a two wave event where you could kind of stall out at the end to get your cooldowns back, he could actually be super helpful because whoever was in that second wave is going to be pretty debuffed beyond all recognition. Mass Sergeant, or Mass Sergeant, Sergeant Pigwald could be better if it was something where, particularly in that second wave, we have fewer characters who have tons of health because his basic does additional damage to enemies that are under 50% health. Um, so I kind of put them all there because it really is harder to predict with that team because there's a, the the difference between them all is less significant than some of uh, some of them with the, the pride teams. So now I'm going to go over, we've, we've gone over our, our legendary trajectory, right? And so now I'm going to bring up how we are going to finish all of those events. So when I talk about all those events, I'm talking about the challenges um, uh, that we get three times a week, uh, all of them on Sundays and then twice on staggered days throughout the week. Um, I'm talking about weekly rotation events. So those are the ones that we get every week now. We're first, we might get scrolls, might get gold event, might get tomes. Um, eventually the three star blue rune events, how to get as far along as, excuse me, <laughs> as possible on those. And then also getting them to auto on uh, tier seven. And part of the thing with that, that I take into consideration, it takes a lot of gold to let someone participate in tier seven on the rune event because they must be level 80. But I'll go over all those requirements as we go through it. Okay. So first we're going to go over and you have access to the daily challenges first you're going to do them the most so that's why we're going over them first uh this uh the gold and the scrolls and the tome challenges so no gear just the gold scrolls and tomes uh you're going to get access to that really early and again with the key the gold means that this is a more valuable event most valuable event of its type silver is like hey it's definitely valuable bronze is like get it done you know you get free stuff red is like i mean don't not do it but do not feel the pressure to rush it at all so you got the gold scrolls and tomes early on you're probably going to use like a rantha lead and the main reason for that is uh, the bear is just like free meat shield it's like free healing and you don't have incredible healing at the beginning um and you don't have tromgar yet who's going to be your main tank you're going to use eventually. So I recommend using Rantha, Illyria, Sharp, Corcoran, and Kelrian. And you're going to use that team also for just going through the campaigns initially. Um, that's going to... Um, so just briefly, the teams I recommend using for uh, clans, initially you're going to want to use Rantha, Tromgar, Mortha, Kyra, and Venomate. Initially, initially, you might, you know, before you get Venomate and Kyra, you might end up using Corcoran and Mar, just because, again, we have to build them up anyway. We're trying to avoid putting any gear into characters we're not planning on using at all. Um, you're going to be required to for certain, um, for certain achievements really early on. If you have an achievement that says, hey, like, put this stuff on Sharp, Fow, etc., do it. Even if it's on Darien, even if it's on Darien, do it. But don't do anything more than that on Darien um, until you're way farther along and can afford to have him be a little better for tournament performance where he's mandatory. Um, uh, and then, uh, but that, that team you're going to be riding for a while is Rantha, Tromgar, Mortha, Kyra, Venomate. Um, Kyra helps get the taunt up earlier on Tromgar and gives him that retaliation uh, counterattack. And Rantha gives a nice little attack bonus to everyone on the team. Uh, order The order team you're going to want to use like really, really early on is going to be Illyria. Then you're going to use Kelrian, who you're going to get 10 free shards from pretty early on. Um, Sharp. And then Foul. And then depending on kind of how you unlock stuff, Darian or Eric... You might, you'll have you'll have to invest some into Darian, so getting at least to the point to where you can get 
Kellerian's going to help you out. But at Vench, you're going to want to, as quickly as you can, replace Kellerian with Little Batty, and you're going to replace Fow and, again, Darian, Eric, whatever you've got going on there, with Snorri and Friesard as you get them from their personal events. Because that's where you're going to unlock them first. Snorri you're going to get in about a week. And then Friesard you're going to get in, again, like that two to three week period, depending. All right. Deviation done. Um, going back. So uh, three times each week, you're going to get all three of these. Eventually, you're, initially, you're going to go in here. And again, eventually, you're going to move into this. You can use Mortha if your Mortha is just so much more geared than Illyria. But overall, Illyria is a better healer. Uh, she provides a lot more single target healing than the shields recovery from Morthon or A3. Uh, Challenger Resilience. This is the one that gives you shackles. And since you need shackles more than anything else that comes in any of these challenges, uh, yes, we care about this more than anything. And luckily, mercifully for us, this is the easiest one to get to max because we can use the most characters and there are a lot of great characters to choose from you don't have to carry around any mediocre or complete dead weight in order to do this so again initially you're going to be kind of using rantha and that's because rantha can give you a tank she's a non-tank or healer that can give you a tank to use and it's a reusable one because you have no healer so she's great early on eventually you can move to using nightiel if you would like once you have her and once you've maybe built her a little bit for that elves campaign Freezard, Kyra, Ven that Kyra Venomate is so good early on, and it's so good to getting the Bounty Hunter stuff done that we're about to go into. And then after that, Eric or Nightiel, these are both quality characters that you're going to be building early on. Next is the Challenge of Agility. The Challenge of Agility gives us Demonic Mockery. Second most valuable thing we're going to be uh, running short on a lot. Now, it is the best buy in the shop, bar none. You pay uh, 500 Drac Coins for a five or for a 50 shard item that normally you have to pay a uh, you have to pay a thousand for that so you get it for half that rate and you also farm shackles a lot more quickly than you do the demonic mockery so you, you need a ton of shackles you need so many more shackles but you do have a good way of eventually once you've gotten a lot of these farms done and you can afford to get stuff from the shop assuming they don't change it demonic mockery is one of the best things to buy there but let's get stuff for free you're going to want to use patriarch cheese lead i know that so this is in there, but I'm telling you, they do not have the sustain. You're like, but it's all healers. They do not have the sustain unless they can take the big hits at the beginning of a wave. And their only way they're going to do that is building up their shields again with Solius or with Patriarch Cheese lead. You're not going to get too far in this until you have Solius, until you unlock Xantara. Until you get Renara, you will almost certainly not be clearing the last tier of this at all, let alone at three stars. Illyria and Mortha, whichever just works for you, whoever's geared enough to do it, use that. It's not a big deal between the two. You can use Send Jail if you want, but don't. Uh, the last one, Challenge of Reason, and that's because you get Chaotic Sorcery, which is good, but me right now, I've got tons of them stored up. You need a lot of them early on, but eventually you get enough farm going on. You're able to get them from the guild shop. You're able to get them from a couple places, uh, a couple hard mode nodes that you're going to want to run anyway. Um, so less priority and because it is even now currently crazy to try and get this on three stars in the final tier of difficulty, even with gear 11 characters, it is rough. There is a little, little trick here. If you get Adam basically maxed and don't max his unique at all, like don't upgrade his unique ability that gives him the flat taunt at all. He's actually a really good choice here, um, to fill in that fifth slot, but that may not make sense. For what you're trying to do so if he cannot i'm telling you it's going to make it a lot easier but the problem is he taunts too frequently whenever it's up and he doesn't you don't get to spread the love and he doesn't have any regen like some of these other characters like tromgar uh, and kinley do next moving on to the scrolls event we've got gladiators and uh, gold event for bounty hunters equal importance they're both so incredibly important we see a lot of grade a characters in here now on the week on these weekly rotation events you do need seven stars so you need an additional there's seven tiers and you need to have the corresponding number of stars in order to have that character participate but they can be at any level and that makes it a lot easier to do than these rune events because it's a lot easier to get uh, you know, to farm stuff, like eventually get it to seven stars and use it, than it is to kind of justify taking someone like Mortha to level 80 or like, oh, there's so many other places I could use that gold. 
So uh, the only leader we have currently in the Gladiators is uh, Revel. And then Revel, Ember, Little Batty, Eric Shieldbreaker, Mortha. You can use her. She's a healer. Why not use her? Bounty Hunters. Uh, if you get Fallon and you... If you get Fallon and you haven't maxed this event, what are you doing with your life? If you haven't, now you got a leader. Congratulations. Um, and at that point, you would uh, definitely replace uh, Sharp with her in this lineup. Because if you have her, you got you probably got you probably got Instructor Gorum, Gorum too. Because we're going to use Goblins to get her. Anyway, uh, Kyra, Venomy, Adam, Sharp. I didn't. Uh, I don't think I had a fifth in this. Whenever I got it to three stars, I think I just used it as so. Um, but there are definitely choices you can make it easier on yourself. Um, but I had Kyra, Venomy, and Adam at gear 11 whenever I did that and like, maxed abilities. Tomes event. The only people I've ever heard talking about running out of tomes are like Krakens, like proper Krakens. Um, but if you are a... Part of the reason the rest of us don't is because, sure, we don't get this maxed out all the way super fast, but we are doing it. So do it. It gets you stuff. And there's lots of great dragon slayers. You got Tromgar, Freezard. Uh, I put Shadar, Mordoom, Snorri. Um, again, by the time you start to get to the seven stars on these, there, there is definitely some dragon slayers who are a little more meh and we don't want to put as much into. And because we don't really need to rush this, because it's rarely going to be a limiting factor for us, the tomes, you might have a little bit of that action early. Um, but once you hit mid game, again, unless you're a cr 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 crack and you are not suffering for tomes. And so it's okay to more slow roll on that. Now the blue rune events, these you can be, um, <laughs> any star on, but, <laughs> um, you need level 80 and it's like 1.3 million gold just to go from 75 to 80. So other, uh, you get some additional stats, but it's not nearly, it doesn't unlock a new gear level yet uh, of course we'll get gear 12 eventually and that'll help you then but i have intentionally i intentionally tried to use as few characters as possible because i didn't want to have to boost anyone unnecessarily to level 80 so with the gladiators i did it four man i did it with revel ember little batty and shield breaker eric shield breaker uh speed runes equally important po a little more important but i mean you need you need more of the damage runes for raid um, in some arena characters, you need speed runes a lot to run the best arena teams, at least at the moment in the current metas that exist, um, and the ones that we foresee based on who has uh, yet to be released. Kyra, Venomy, Adam, I kid you not, I three-manned it. These characters were maxed out and had good runes, but I three-manned it. It took some RNG. I was not clearing on three, and I have, a, I have it on auto. I have it on auto with these three characters. I, ain't, I still don't have any other level 80 bounty hunters, um, but it, it can be done. Uh, the next tier of them is a C crit chance runes, health runes, potency runes, Patriarch Chi, Ember, Kinley slash Hilda, whoever you kind of want to get up there. It might make sense to do one over the other, depending on how things change by the time you get there. And Revel, I did it with those four. Health and Orc human runes. Obviously, I have five there, um, but I did not have, um, uh, I think it was Little Batty at level 80 at the time. Um, I may still not have Little yeah, I have a little batty because you have to get her up anyway. You're gonna get Tromgar and Little Batty to level 80. You could use all five. Doesn't matter. Um, got a healer with Solius. They ain't going to nowhere. And then potency runes. So potencies are really helpful for Arena whenever you have these Tromgars with high tenacity. Um, Hard Orc has notoriously like low potency for whatever reason. So um, anywho, this is also really useful. Uh, I use Nidiel, Hard Orc, Xantara, and General Murdoch. Again, some people are like, oh, Hard Orc, how's this free to play using Hard Orc? Because here, you don't need to have him at seven stars. And he does a lot of what you need him to do. Again, he gets rid of that, um, the debuffs passively. He applies the ability block. He applies the bleed. All that jazz, he does without being at seven stars for this event. You just need him at level 80. Um... And you're, you are going to get him eventually. It'll take months, but I'll get into the star shot breakdown a little bit. Next, Tenacity Runes. Pretty much you only use these for tanks, notably Kelrian and Tromgar. But I did it with just Tromgar, Freezard, and Shadar. You're going to get more Doom to level 80 as a result of this anyway. So bring him in if you get him before Shadar. Or if you get both, just bring them both in. Don't matter, no. Um, I Again, I... I have three, I have three star tier seven of these with General Murdoch, Nightiel, Adam. Took some RNG, but I did it. Crit damage, you're going to build the demons anyway. They're going to be in your arena team. You're going to get them to level 80. Go ahead and use them there. So I have a full list of all the characters that you need because obviously there's some multiple uses um, with the demons. 
um, and with gladiators and uh, or sorry with with bounty hunters and gladiators they're going to obviously be a part of some other faction where they've been used there is a total of 18 characters required to get to level 80 as a result of just going hard on gear going hard on abilities on the best characters and kind of neglecting the rest but you save yourself resources in the long run now we have some miscellaneous farm characters and that's little baddie and shadar we will get into those in a sec here so at this point, we're going to go into the next part of this, which is the hard mode mission and sharp farm shop farming <laughs> priority list. So first, we're going to start over here with the hard modes. Come on, baby. All right. 12 energy hard modes that you were going to run, period, at the beginning. Corcrum on that. Um, and you'll see, you'll, if you go back into, you'll see which, um, which node it is I'm referring to. You're going to run these guys, all 480 energy total. You're going to run these guys. You're going to unlock these pretty quick in your first week, almost certainly. 400 total energy, 880, right? 880 out of our 960, not including any of our level up energy, not including any of that um, uh, of that common event uh, that you get for Little Baddie that I talked about in the beginning. So that's what, you're gonna, that's what you're going to use for gear and stuff. And I'm telling you, it may it may hurt a little early on, but you need to get these shards and you'll be much better for it um, because you want to be free from these guys by the time that you unlock these because there is 1,900 total energy from characters that are exclusively farmed at these locations for the most part, a couple exceptions like Tromgar from the achievements. Um... So that's why you, you want to be farming these every day so that you are freed up to do these and not be behind with like five and six star characters. These are best sometimes farms. These are whenever you feel like you have a lot left, you at the moment you don't feel like you need a bunch of gear. There's some things that are go-tos, like the freaking pages boots, right? Um, but if you feel yourself wanted to use some energy, eventually I still farm Robin Bad and Old Lore every day because they're the freaking blue <laughs> scroll hard mode, two of the two of the four um, blue scroll hard mode nodes. The other ones are um Slinger and Venomate, who are useful characters anyway that we're going to be farming, right? So these two over here. Um, Amara, she isn't she a lot of great gear in her nodes, and she is only farmable that way. So if you end up with free freed up availability here, um, little baddie, you're going to get a max of ten shards every three days. Now two of these events are pretty easy. Basically, spend two million over the course of those three days, as long as you basically only improve your characters with gold during those days. I know it can be a little frustrating at times. Um, Unless there's some return for that, um, I really would recommend just kind of making sure you got enough gold to know you can max those out in those days. Because those are your easier ones. In order to get a max on the energy spending common event, you're going to need 1,200 per day. Now, early on, it's not going to matter because you're going to get tons of free energy from all the level ups you're getting. When you first play this game, you would need to like sit down for like four to five hours to actually progress far enough to use all this energy that you've gotten to actually let it accumulate in your account. You're going to need to spend some time. Um, so uh, I build it in. It's it's more like you're pro if you follow my guide and uh, at some point between the hundred and like hundred and twenty day mark you're gonna have little baddie at seven stars and you can kind of relax or you can feel more free to do um, other things. Now you do get like drac coins again energy from the the leveling characters events. Um, so it's it's definitely good to still like do well in them. I still love that um, leveling event because you get so much free energy. Um, but somewhere between that 100, 120 day mark, you're going to get little baddie to five stars. And in a couple weeks, you'll get her to, uh, you'll unlock her in the first place. Uh, Shadar, tier seven Aerochar raid, only place you can get him, only place you're going to be able to get him. If you're running tier seven Aerochar, you're going to get a minimum, assuming everyone's doing their 800 tickets. And again, if you can free to play, get 960, you should be getting 800. That ain't even hard. Um, we are, we're recommending spending over 800 energy just right here, right? Uh, but you're going to get a minimum of 15 shards a week. So you're going to be running at least, you're going to be running about three and a half raids a week. And at a minimum, you get five shards per. So that's definitely, that's, you know, 22 weeks. That's that's quite a few months. But if you perform better, you're going to get more. But Shadar is great. Um, we're going to go to, this is this will be probably the most helpful part for a lot of people. Other than just kind of seeing um, the advised like progression. So this is who you're going to want to use. Uh, who's, who, here's who you're going to want to prioritize 
in the shops. You are gonna go Kyra first. And the reason for that is Kyra is gonna be integral to your clan's team, and she's gonna be integral to your uh, uh, kind of like not immediate arena team. And I'll show you the arena, arena uh, progressions. That's just right down here at the bottom. We're almost done. Hang in there with me. We're trying to keep it under an hour. Oh. Um, but you got Kyra. Kyra is going to be your first person you're farm for the guild shop. It's going to take a hot minute because you're not going to get a ton of guild shop currency initially. Um, but you just try to motivate everyone in your guild. Getting a good guild is so crucial. Um, try to motivate everyone to do the missions. Um, Rantha, only to finish her up. And if you know that you don't it, need to rush to finish her up, don't farm her all this way. Just farm her from her 12 energy nodes from those achievements you get from unlocking more characters. Illyria, you're going to need to spend some here for Illyria, and that's just, again, do it so that you're able to get her in time in order to um, to unlock, um, hello, Ember, <laughs> uh, Ember at, at seven stars. Uh, Eric Shieldbreaker, great gladiator, good overall utility. You're going to use him probably in your, um, your challenge of resilience initially early on. Um, these are characters that are like, hey, if you want to unlock it at some point before finishing someone, that's not a terrible idea. Silvers, you want to wait until these guys are done. Not only can you farm Kinley from, and Hera from a couple 12 and 16 node uh, energy nodes earlier on to unlock them, um, but you're just not going to be using them for a while in according with this progression that I've given you. Diesel Rock, this is the only place he's farmable, and he is not terrible. I think for a whale, he's actually in the Goblins team um, that I would recommend using in Battlegrounds. Um, old Lore, you're going to farm him till the end of them making Blue Scrolls the limiting factor there because you just need Blue Scrolls all the time. It's worth farming him for that 16 energy a day once you have all of your other characters farmed. Darian is trash. You're going to get him from a lot of um achievements he's kind of like Rantha. he gets achievements for the same things um and you'll just you'll just eventually get him and the guild shop is way more useful for things like um for gear uh, that's things like for gear that's what it's useful for in addition to getting shards so because it's a slower farm you get less currency overall than arena and tower I don't necessarily recommend pouring it. you definitely want to use the nodes that you have for these characters in the gold and silver tiers Moving on to Arena, we're going to go hard on Mar early on, right? He's an orc. We want to make sure that we're ready to at least get five-star Solius. Um, Sharp, he's going to be needed for free-to-play Ender, and he's really not a bad for an early order um, mission team. Uh, and he's very possibly a part of the Thalon meta eventually. That wouldn't necessarily mean that we need to get him aggressively, but it's because we're going to use him for Ember. Sengiel literally just needs to like be punched in Ember and easily like be taken to like something easy like Gear Seven just to take punches. Um, Slinger, solid early game meta with Kyra, Venomate, and Tromgar, and then kind of like figuring out who else you're going to use in there. Um, which is that's kind of what we're initially kind of moving towards, and eventually with the Slinger and more Doom meta. Next, we got Master Duo. He is great for kind of cheesing a bit, the T7 raid. Him and Little Batty can make a great combination to help you out, um, whether against Hard Work or um, uh, or against Solius. Um, so going after Master Duo is not a bad idea whatsoever. He's just not someone that places high priority because you got to get these character, enough characters of seven stars to be able to clear all of it. So just rushing these cheesers doesn't help you as a free-to-play player. Major Shot, again kind of like a, a raid cheeser and potentially the best fifth slot for the goblin team um but not only are we using that goblin team way 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 late um but he also may not be the best in slot there because it may be a single wave and that's going to mitigate his value a little bit uh kagi you will get a shnikes ton of arena currency you will have him farm by the time the pride event comes around don't waste energy. Just farm him there, and you're even going to unlock him for free from an early event. Voiren, if the shard shop conversion rate wasn't so bad, I'd tell you to just wait until you get harder before you farm him, but yeah. Tournament, now this is about the same as guild currency, much slower than Tower Arena. Briefly touching on it, if you see a character shard reward tournament, usually we get three days notice for this. If you see one of those, 
do not feel like you're doing something wrong by deviating briefly in order to farm them from one of these shops in particular or to like farm their nodes a little bit just to be able to unlock them to participate and receive those rewards because those are going to help boost you a lot further in your progression than the time it then it's going to cost you to deviate briefly but and that's even at like green and gray rewards it's going to be worth it um it's either boreas or wonder lula uh, it, it, it might depend on what direction you want to go. If you're like, hey, I want to focus more on having Wonder Lula to use her eventually for Thalon, fine. If you want to more say, hey, I want to make sure that I can unlock buff and um, I want to kind of project for having the best one, then Boreas might be the option that helps Pride out most there. Lake, I can see some future application. We just don't have it yet um, in a really significant way. And Faley is pretty ignorable. Uh, again, you can see I have the farming grade at 250 a day with tier 4 rewards. 750, that's from getting top 500 rewards along with the two um, arena attacks daily. 500 a day between guild quest and raid. And 1400 a day from partial hard mode completion. So not the two floor 9 towers. I'm not saying max, but then also considering the, um, uh, the daily that you get for doing at least one floor of the tower. So initially you're going to go Venomate and Morth again, balance, right? You want to unlock Venomate early because you want to be able to use them in clans, but you want to make sure that Morth is providing enough healing. You want to make sure that you get her to seven stars in time for Soleus. That would be such a sad thing to miss him for that reason. If you feel like you need to rush Corcoran because he's behind, um, it's possible for Corcoran to be barely behind Mortha with this farming strategy. And if you need him in that window in order to unlock Soleus, fine, do it. Um, Snorri, again, you're going to have an initial event to unlock him. Not a bad person to put in a tower, though. And again, pretty much if they're unlockable in tower, I don't recommend that you spend energy on him. Punch your face, we're going to use him to unlock um, General Murdoch, and he's certainly not bad. Hilda and Foul, we're going to use not only in uh, Battlegrounds, but also to unlock Renara. Adam is going to be great eventually, great bounty hunter, all that jazz, um, but he's just kind of not initial priority. We're going to be able to get far, far enough initially without him. Uh, and again, we will get to Adam a lot faster than we would get to Kagi. Then we got Robin Bat. Again, you can farm and you can not. He's not super, 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 super useful unless you want to use him for raid cheesing. And you are also going to farm his hard mode ad nauseum because he's one of the other blue scroll hard mode farms. We are almost there. Here is just the arena progression that I am setting you up for with this. Initially, like the day you hit level 25, you're probably going to be using this team. Rantha Kelry and Sharp Cork from Illyria. Once you get Tromgar and Kyra and Venomate, you're going to kind of morph into this. Then you're going to go to the Slinger, Tromgar, Kyra, Venomate, Illyria, Slash, and Tar, if you somehow got her already. You're going to morph into that. You're going to use that. And then you're going to move into the Soleus meta. And obviously, if you hit the Soleus meta before you hit this, like, that's what you're using. If you got what's further ahead, jump to it. Um, little baddie slash ember depending on what you got moving to slinger once you get more doom you can use him here as a replacement for little baddie or ember if you really want to if you feel like you need to based on um, what you have your hard work's really far behind if your shadar is not someone you have unlocked yet and then finally we have the eventual buff meta with more doom shadar kyra it's hard to predict here but xantara and slinger both make sense tbd we'll see what comes after these are the battlegrounds teams that i'm setting you up for You've got on offense, uh, you've got buff, more doom, Kyra, Shadar, Zintara, Slinger, Solis. You can take a look at this. You can read this. Here are the teams I'm setting you up for. The basic strategy for this. On defense, you want to go with teams that take longer for your enemy to beat. That's the most important thing because if they're smart, they're going to be able to beat your team. More often than not, they're getting to choose which team they're using. They can choose a solid counter. So you want it to be something that takes as long as possible. You want to double up on tanks here. You want to have the evasion coming from foul. I hope this has been useful to you <laughs> because it's been a lot for me. The final thing I'll go into is the shard shop, the, the star shop. So this is the bane of the free to play player. Without going through all the math, it translates to 132 days of shoveling arena and tower currency farming into the star shop. You will likely spend as much time max rank all the other characters in the tower shop as you will um <laughs> get these 10 to 15 random shards from completing the tower so that's one of the nice things about tower if you're completing that particularly in a hard mode like regularly you're gonna be able to get those 15 and maybe not 15 you might get 13 because you're not getting all those side rooms um 
but those extra shards, it doesn't sound like a lot, but whenever you're doing this for four months, that's a lot of shards that will help you get to them. Hard Orc is only farmable here, and he has such great overall utility. He prevents certain metas from existing right now simply because of that debuff on pass uh, on his passive, uh, debuff cleansing on passive. However, Wonder Lula is almost certainly going to be integral to the Thalon team, and the Thalon team is going to be pretty rec pretty reckoned. It's not going to be the arena meta, but it's going to be a really rough team to mess with. So at that point, you're going to have gear that you can spend on in the star shop, or you can go ahead and start holding out in case, who knows, maybe they bring someone else along. Um, I hope this has been helpful for you. Hit me up with any questions. If you feel like there's anything I glossed over, thank you for your time. It's Like I said, I warned you it's going to be a long one, but thank you for all the, the peeps who have been helping push me along and asking me about stuff. I hope this has answered your questions. I will put out an infographic for this later. Didn't have time for it before the release today. But I hope you're having a good one. Nerd out.